make this particular video a little, little bit different than what we've been doing. Not much at all, though. Um, this is no longer the standard normal distribution. This is just a normal distribution. We've talked about how IQ scores are normally distributed. Um, these have a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 15. And anyway, we're given this value here, and we need to find this area. So we want to find the area of the shaded region, which is the area in the IQ distribution below 175, or sorry, below one, or just plain 75. All right, now, um, remember the calculator can do any type of normal distribution. And the problems that we've been using, the normal CDF problems, if we only put in two numbers, the calculator understands that we're in a standard normal distribution. But if we give it a third and fourth number, with that third number being the mean, right, and that fourth number being the standard deviation, your calculator can find probabilities of any normal distribution. So all you have to know is you're dealing with a normal distribution. It'll be somewhere in the word problem. And your mean and your standard deviation. And then all your job is to do is to come up with what's the region I'm finding the probabilities for, or what's the area that I'm looking for. Right, area and probability are the same thing. So sometimes these may be worded as find the area. Sometimes these may be worded as what's the probability uh, an IQ score will be below 75. would be the same thing here. Okay, remember, normal CDF, when you're using it, you're asking yourself, where does this shading start? And where does this shading end? All right, this shading here starts somewhere way over to the left. Now remember, in the standard normal distribution, negative 10, was plenty big. Uh, this is no longer the standard normal distribution, meaning the mean is no longer zero. The standard deviation is no longer one. So we have to kind of adjust our thinking for when we just have these um, one-sided probabilities, all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So what I do is I just put in a whole bunch of uh, a negative number and then a whole bunch of nines if I'm looking at something that doesn't have a lowest value like this particular problem. So I'm just going to put in a whole bunch of nines here, which is plenty big. I mean, I really only need one for this probability, but you can never be too far away. You can never put too many nines in here. All right, and then 75, comma. This time the mean is 100. The standard deviation is 15. All right, and then we hit enter. So the area of that shaded region is 0 0.04. Seven eight to four decimal places. Point zero four seven eight. All right. Uh, the next few are, are really similar to this. So number eleven wants to find the area of this shaded region or the probability an IQ score would fall between seventy five and one fifteen. So very similar to the last problem, except instead of a lower number, upper number, or sorry, instead of a like a big negative number for the lower number. We just use the numbers that they gave us. Right, these are a little bit easier on the TI calculator than the previous problem because you don't have to think about uh, which side do I need to put the 999 on. It's just lower number, upper number. Mean is 100. Standard deviation is 15. And enter. So 0 0.7936 to four places. All right, 12, again, very similar to uh, problems number 3 and 7, uh, the inverse normal type problems. This time we're given an area to the left of an IQ score. All right, this X is no longer Z. It's a little subtle difference. When you see an X down here instead of a Z, you're not just going to use two numbers or a single number on the inverse normal. You'll have to use three numbers. So just like before, when I add this, uh, mean and deviation. I go from the standard normal distribution to any distribution or this particular distribution uh, if I add that to the normal CDF. Same thing happens in the inverse normal. All right, I'm going to add instead of just 0.9 I'm going to add the mean of 100 the standard deviation of 15. All right, remember inverse normal takes an area to the left the area to the left of this unknown IQ score is 0.9, so I'm putting in that. But I'm also 
putting in the 100 and the 15. So it'll change it from a z-score back to this 119. All right. What your calculator is actually doing is it's doing all the work for you to change this thing from this z-score, 0.9. It's multiplying it by the standard deviation and adding, oops, standard deviation is 15, and adding the mean. And it's getting it to this number right here. So it's doing this all these steps, finding the z-score, multiplying it by the standard deviation, adding uh, the mean all at one time just by putting in that 100 and that 15. Okay, So there's our number. It wants us to round to one decimal place, so 119.2. Uh, Alright, and then 13. Another similar problem to the one we just did. This time the area to the right of the IQ score is 0.9. So that means this IQ score separates the bottom 10% from the upper 90%. All right, it would be considered the 10th percentile for IQ scores. All right, same thing as before. We're just going to do inverse normal. This time the area to the left is no longer 0.9. Right, that's the area to the right. So the area to the left down here is 0.1, right, comma 115, comma 15. Close that off, 80.7 uh, to one decimal place, 80.8. Alright, so those are uh, probability and inverse problems with the TI. Uh, no longer Z scores, but actual um, values from a normal distribution.